What's going on? Well, um, the uh, marina. I was just chatting to the guys at the marina, and there's a whole load of fenders that have come off other people's boats and are just been floating around the marina. So they've just got them all together. Don't people don't people want them back? Well, they've been there for a month now, and uh, nobody's claimed them. So um, they're now up for grabs. So I've um, picked up two um, sausage fenders because we've got two fenders that are starting to leak now um, just because they've got damage and we have tried to fix the damage but it's just um, not working so they're leaking so if we can get those replaced at no cost then we're in for a, we're winners Oh. Oh, You're glowing a bit, Bev. Oh, it's a bit cold out there, I'm telling you. Yes, it's another blowy day in Bangor, but um, just been out checking the fenders and just making sure that there's more than one fender taking the weight. Big Blue are our big fenders complaining bitterly. You can hear the squeaks and yells of them in the, in the gusts. And um, it all seems to be fine. The port side breast line is holding the boat from rubbing too hard against the pontoon. It's taking a lot of strain, so I've taken the trouble of putting a safety line on it. Uh, the safety line's a polyester one, very strong, but no stretch in it. So I've left a loop of it hanging loose. If the, the, if the octoplot parts, um, the polyester will catch the boat before we whack the pontoon. And that's its only job, really. And no doubt the noise will wake us up and we'll be up like Olympic sprinters. But that's for later. Right now, I'm just going to get this all off and get a nice warm cup of tea and may have had enough. <laughs> Well, I've been having a look out to uh, sea and um, it's sheltered in the lock. Doesn't mean you'd want to go out in it, but it is sheltered. It's not like they're getting down in the south of England where apparently they've got 122 mile an hour winds at one point. Uh, we're not that bad, but it's just a bumpy day, I'm afraid. Nothing we can do about it. This is supposed to die down. Tomorrow's supposed to be pleasant. And then we're supposed to get an absolute hammering on Monday, I believe. Monday morning at some stupid o'clock. So we'll just have to deal with that when it comes along. But we've got the boat massively fendered up. We've got um, our ropes on. We've got an emergency line on in case a rope gives. It's not really a much of a crisis because we are being blown against the pontoon. So most of the ropes are fairly slack, to be honest. And uh, so I don't think we need to worry too much about them. But... <laughs> I could be living in a nice, comfortable flat, <laughs> unaware of the weather outside, heating on, pleasant music playing in the background. Or I could be out here in this. <laughs> I must be mad. <laughs> so, hopefully our ropes will be um, happier because they've just got some a new uh, rope protector because the ones outside are getting a wee bit wrecked. I know the stern rope is in tatters, literally. Not the rope itself, the protector. <laughs> Just the protector, but at the end of the day, they are sacrificial, so... Um... <laughs> yes, they are, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, good thing for a reuse project. Give me two seconds. Ah. What have you got there, then? <sighs> Beverly said that the um, one on the rear is in tatters. I think she's right, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just snipped out and um, whipped it off the line. Yeah, because we're going to replace that. Yeah, I'll take your clean one and stick it on. Yeah. Okay, so... We have a viewer question of the week, uh, which is, have we ever been scared while at sea and in bad weather? And it's a good question because the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's also a good question because at the moment we are, I mean, say it's sunny today, but we have had nothing else but storms. It's not too warm today though. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's about one Celsius. Yeah. Uh, yes, so we have been scared at sea. We have been through storms and things like that. So what we thought we'd talk about is how we've got over that. And 
where we are now compared to where we were when we started. Yeah. <laughs> Um, as I say, one of the other things is, uh, you know, what is scared? And there's been a couple of times I've been scared. The first, actually, is when Beverly proposed this crazy lifestyle. And it's like, you know, I have a job, I have various bits and bobs. I have a very settled life. And then all of a sudden I'm going to pack it all in and do something completely different it wasn't my fault the penguin made me do it well that's true <laughs> but you know that was scary but equally i thought it was an adventure oh it's definitely an adventure and the other time i was scared was definitely at chicken rock or anything like that which could easily happen the most of it uh, but when um, we were going round uh, we brought the sail down but unfortunately there was a tiny bit of triangle left up and it was just being caught by the, the wind so it was going up riding up so I had to go forward to um, you had to go forward in absolutely dreadful seas I did and I went forward in dreadful seas to bring it down um and uh, basically tied it to the boom and that was in our first year i think or... <sighs> certainly very close to it very close but basically those are the two times i've been scared um in, in, my, in my case um it's not so much fear it's anxiety i suffer from more than anything and sorry about that it wasn't me and um so my mission is to do whatever I can to stop the problems happening in the first place and I sit and think about 400 problems that could occur when maybe only one is actually practical. Mm. Well that's what anxiety is like and that's how it hits people. So that takes us to really the next method of dealing with the, the fears which is to be prepared. <laughs> There's a number of things you can do to be prepared, isn't there? Yeah, we can look at uh, weather amp apps, for instance, so that we understand the weather that's going to come. Um, because that's where the storms are going to come from. It is, but this is where we learned one of our first lessons, uh, which is that the weather apps will fool you. They will tell you you're going to go to sea and it will be 10 knots of wind and you're going to have a lovely day with sunshine and you believe it. And what you don't notice is that it also says somewhere in the corner of the app that the gusts might reach 22 knots. So you go out with full sails up and you get blasted by a 22 knot gust and it makes your day an absolute nightmare. Yeah, so um, the other thing is uh, with the weather wraps, uh, especially when it comes to storms, because um, windy weather is very volatile, it means that the weather can change quite rapidly. Whereas if it's calm, mm -hmm. the weather doesn't change as rapidly, does it? It's more predictable. It's more predictable. So you have to believe the generalities rather yeah. than the minutiae of detail. And another thing you can do to make your own life easier is always assume you're going to have a storm every time you go out. I know that sounds slightly paranoid, but what we do is we prep the boat for storm weather every single time we go out so if we're out and we see clouds on the horizon that look a bit threatening we don't have to fit lifelines or anything like that they're already fitted um, when we come into port we don't have to put extra wraps around the um, jib on a day when we think there's going to be a storm we always put extra lines around the jib uh, another one for uh, being prepared is um, close your windows our windows are always closed. When we go to sea. As is our sea cocks. Well, They're always closed. Always close your sea cocks. And uh, what we have um, is a uh, list which is we, we read before we go out. And that is basically what we need to do to make sure that we are as prepared for storms as possible. Another thing you can do is always set your lines as if there's going to be a storm when you come into port. Yeah, um, that means that Beverly might put on a safety line um, a couple of places. Um, obviously, we're always well fended up. Mm -hmm. um, and it's basically just be as prepared as you can.
Well, the next big item, of course, is fear. What if you've got it wrong? What if it's worse than you think out there? Well, I'm afraid to say, for me, um, I am just a little bit more seat of the pants kind of girl. Um, more gung ho. Very much more gung ho than Beverly. And um, I also used to be a brownie teacher, and I would have little girls, and I would say to those girls, face your fear, as I would set them really hard tasks like zip wiring and things from height. There's things I don't like doing, but I've always been, you've got to face your fears. The big, um, the big mistake was letting you read Frank Herbert's Dune, because ever, ever since then you've been going around quoting fear as the mind killer. And Yeah, and of course, face your fear is out of Dune as well. But I, keep, I keep expecting to wake up and find a gom jabar at my throat <laughs> if, if you're reading the mantra to me. No, that's, that's what I used to do with the brownies. <laughs> One of the things you can do to help decrease the fears and, and, and deal with storms and bad weather and things like that, of course, is just live through them. Um, one of the things we have learned, two of the things we've learned, actually, is how much the book can cope and how much we can cope. And knowing that you can cope is half the battle. Mm. But getting experience. Now, obviously, you can get experience on your own boat, but you can go out... Um, um, sailing on other people's boat the racers are always looking for crew <laughs> they, um, they go out in atrocious weather and they go out in some cracking weather but the thing is by getting more and more experience then you know you are more prepared and you know that you can cope you also learn about how your boat responds in certain weathers and so you know what weathers the boat will respond better in than others mm. um, you know boats are not going to respond equally well to all sea conditions boats are Boats are a compromise, you know, mm. so in some sea conditions they will do better than others. This particular boat loves going to weather. She loves going upwind and being close hauled. Absolutely loves it. Um, going downwind, it's not as much fun. Mm. It's easier in some respects. You hoist the jenny and hold on, but um, if she wants to go, if you want to get going on this boat, you go, you go, go to wind, you go up weather. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's more I bumpy. <laughs> I would say uh, because um, Salty Lass is a keeled boat, um, well, they're I all, find they're, they're all keeled boats. I know, but the one time I was in a flat bottom boat. Oh, right, with you now. Um, you know, I've not tended to be ill, but on a flat bottom boat because it rolls like a it it it, it corkscrews well, on a I think, on the, a roll. I think the phrase that I've heard used is it rolls like a pig on wet on wet grass. Yeah, well, I'm yeah. afraid to say that's when um, you know the flat bottom boats. Yeah, you, that's you, when I'm. You feeling. also learn that perversely enough, in, in bad enough weather, it's worth putting a bit of seal up. You know, just um, a small bit, just but. a scrap of seal. Uh, if you put like um, a, a bit of main up or a storm seal, then the boat basically leans over into the wind slightly and becomes a lot more stable. Mm. Um, running a boat under engine in bad weather is a bouncier experience than running a boat under sail in bad weather. Mm. There will come a point where you need to use the engine and hoist the sail in, but until you get to that point, try and keep the sail up as long as you can. That's something we've learned about this boat. Mm. Uh, it may be different on other boats, but for this boat, that's how we do it. Mm. And I think the other thing we've learned is about us and what we can tolerate. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, so we are still sort of like, I would say, uh, cautious sailors because at the end of the day we do believe that we want to um, enjoy rather than endure yeah. um, so that's why we're cautious but equally um, we know we can do it we have I mean it's a case of you know you can do it it's not pleasant but you can do it so that's the thing um, getting yourself out of a bad situation you can do it learning to anchor in all situations once you know you can do that once you know you can spot good anchorages then your choices start to widen out considerably mm. and that makes life easier for you because you're not quite as panicked yeah so to sum up um our sort of three point plan for dealing with scary stuff at sea is be prepared be prepared and face your fears because by facing your fears you get to point three which is you gain experience and that makes it easier to deal with the fears Fishermen say that you should be scared of the sea. I don't know if you should be scared of the sea, but you should definitely respect it. Because at the end of the day, it is a dangerous mistress. 
and um, you know she can throw everything at you from beautiful calm to this let's put it this way Bevy and I are staying in and just slugging up in salty lass because this is just crazy